this, this sort of little dance that we're doing up here is really, uh, really appropriate in relation to my introduction to Georges de Um In the, I think it was 1993, I, I went to Edinburgh College of Art to study to do a PhD. And when I was there, um, I made many good friends. And one of them was Elko Hoofman. And Elko and Bridget and I used to talk, of course, about design all the time. And Elko had a favorite book, which he clutched in his hands all the time. And he lauded over us that he had Georges de Combe's Shifting Sights, this book that then was so hard to, to get a hold of. Um, and so every now and then, you know, I'd, I'd get Elko's book. And you, you can sit down now. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd get Elko's, Elko's book and, you know, oh, George Decombe, oh, 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 George Decombe. And then I saw that uh, he was speaking in London at the AA, I think 1999, I think. Yeah. So off I went to London to go hear George Decombe speak. And um, Elko was also there, I have to say. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know if he remembers this or not. He said that when he was working on the Swiss Way, which is, he might talk about it, he might not, a project, he said that all he really had to do was sweep. He just swept away, and the design revealed itself. He's swept away virtually everything up here, <laughs> and he's brought a chair back, um, but... In, in my, my, my mind, George de Combe is um, one of the most exceptional landscape architects um, alive. And, huh? For, alive just, just for a while, because <laughs> I'm probably going to kill him by the end of this day. Um, and it's always nice to know that those that you, you admire actually are quite human. And I can say it's official, Georges de Combe is a brat. So having said that, Georges, please. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you for your short introduction. <laughs> uh, thank you for the invitation, that's mieux. Bon. Uh, to the university, but to uh, Marsha and uh, Alisa. You know, Winnipeg or the Canada, it's the first time I came to Canada. It's really a place evident to talk about or to understand or to try to understand or to think about or to work about the problem of uh, global change in, in climate. Because there is a confrontation, direct confrontation of a huge landscape and uh, also a native population. So all this make a kind of con combination of a, a situation which is exemplary. It's cold here. Everyone say it's cold. Uh, you said it's cold. It's, for me, it's not a discovery because in my country, in Switzerland, it's very cold. You just have to climb. But when I was young, a uh, child, I was much more, you know, here I have no problem with uh, the, the, the cold on the hands, for example, which is uh, when you ski, you have much more cold when you are up into the Alps. But apart from uh, sharing these uh, temperature problems, we share also something, you know, in Switzerland, we have a problem or we talk about the problem, or we think about the problem. What is the relationship between the plain, where we have all the big cities, Zurich, Bern, Geneva, 
and the mountains. The mountains are really a particular landscape. And we have, um, working in this mountain, people like, uh, similar to the one who here are interested with uh, the history of this territory, Canada, with the people who were here, the people who are now here, how they relate. And we have the same problem in, in Switzerland where we had uh, farmers very high in the Alps, very, very, very hard life. And uh, we have very good architects in this uh, altitude, like Peter Zumter, maybe the, the most uh, well-known, but you have also Caminada, who are all, well, Caminada especially, is uh, thinking about what is uh, possibilities, what are the possibilities in, in, in this mountain landscape. And they all refuse what is uh, the common facility or stupidity to imagine that the landscape is only a leisure park for the skiing people from Zurich or Geneva. They all pretend that there is something, a bit like uh, the native here, you have a culture, you have another récit, another stories, full of stories in this landscape, for a culture and even an economy of a possibility of an economy. And uh, Caminada, you wrote a, a book which is interesting for the students, it's Birkhäuser, but it's, uh, I don't make publicity for myself. It's for Caminada. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, on, the, on the path to building, it's called. And he said, when I work in, in, in the, his office, which is a bit low in the mountains, he said, sometimes I go up, very up at the top of the mountains, just to first you, you walk. So you, when you are in the mountains, you feel your body, first thing, in this uh, virtual world. If you climb, you feel your legs, you feel your... So you, you are changing the relationship with the landscape also, not by seeing it only, but uh, by uh, walking it. And he said, when I am up, it's so beautiful. You know, sublime is a word that we can expect. It's so beautiful, it's true. It's, you have gigantic mountains, white. Uh, and, uh, and he said, I don't know what to do with this, but I'm sure it's important to think about this. And it's uh, very much related to, to, to the problem here. I don't know if anyone knows what to do with uh, this uh, part of the world, Canada, but uh, must feel, I guess, uh, some... When I, I flew from Geneva above the Canada, I have seen this long. It's impossible not to think there is something here. This is the world. We are not going to destroy it like, just like that. Well, adaptation, you know, it's a word I never used, adaptation. For me, it's a passive, of course, it's a, everything I thought before I, uh, I listened to Mark and all the other, and I accept the world now. But for me, it's when I see a site, just like uh, Bas was saying, you think about what is possible to transform it, to change with the strategy, tactics, of, but never to adapt. Because for me, adapt is, you know, but it's, it, I'm coming to the good point of adaptation now, the, the right use of this word. But adapt for me was, uh, you know, uh, the contrary is inadapté in French. So it's always a behavior, is inadapté. Unadapted. So when a child shouts, when he must not, it's, it's pas adapté. So it's, it's for me that's a connect, connect, connotation of uh, if you are adapted, you are correct. Yeah. But now we we have a, an anthropologist in France, Philippe Descola, which is absolutely a key personage for me because of what you said, Bas, about uh, the origin of, la, of the paysage d'Alain Roger, the framing, the landscape, the uh, painting, and uh, some, 
This man, uh, Philippe Descola, wrote a book which beyond nature and culture. He refused the scat of, and he said, you have many, many, it's, it's, it's a Western, it's true what uh, Alain Roger said, but it's a link to a particular civilization, the Western civilization. The Inuit have no idea of nature, I'm sorry. They have uh, other relationships. And so I don't want to make a lecture on this, but uh, for me it's a very, very uh, uh, important point that you must think again of this uh, other way of uh, having relationship with the non-humans, be vegetation, be animals, be, you know, everyone laughs with animists, but they are all Christians. They, they all believe that they go to paradise, so it's not much more uh, rational that uh, <laughs> other possibility to see spirits in the snow or, or this kind of relation Maybe it is necessary to, I'm sure it is necessary, because now we face this man, the, ge uh, the geologist was here, this guy, Rock, who was talking. Uh, he said it was always a climate change. That's uh, okay, but uh, this argument could be also put on the uh, climato-sceptic guys. They always say, well, there is nothing new climate has always changed, but now the speed of the change has completely changed. So, uh, this, so we are facing now a dramatic situation. We, we see only, for example, in Switzerland, we are attacked by the climate change. Imagine that uh, the, the skiing domain up 2,000, 3,000 meters. Now, every summer, with helicopter, they put, uh, they dispose hectares of geo, white geotextile to avoid the melting of glacier. Because everything, uh, permafrost of the Alp, which is not permafrost, but the same, is uh, disassembling all the teleski, the housing, the rocks are falling, and more also, all the, the permafrost is uh, containing bacteria. And these bacteria are here from since uh, 20,000 years, and microbiologists of University of Zurich, they make a, take example of this, and they've seen that a lot of these bacteria are inhibitors of uh, growing vegetation. So imagine all these uh, little beasts going to, to the water, going to the Rhin River, invading uh, all the watershed of this river, and uh, what is, what is uh, the result? So I, I show you a project now, one project, uh, which is a link to this. It's a problem of what they call renaturation. But it's a change between a, a river which has been canalized and a river which was transformed in a larger free space for the river. And this is a this introduction, too long, I know, is uh, it's just to frame the intention behind the project. Why we do that? Why we do that? Why we think important to make this now? Hello. This is the site of the project. You could uh, follow the three nature theories, so you have the the shape of the, the form of the world given by geology. You have a, a, an agricultural plain, and you have this row of uh, Italian poplar, which is the site of my work. So I would say there is a first nature given by God <laughs> and uh, transformed by man. And this I would like, and I call our project a river garden. So I will come back why I say a river garden. So if you look at uh, the 1951, you see the river uh, morphology. And this river, this uh, kind of landscape, I interpret it like, so I have a, we talk about analysis, project, design. 
I always go on a site and a, or see a site and I start to draw before any program, any uh, real project, but just to, to, to have a dialogue, physical dialogue. Uh, a drawing is a selection. If you take a photo, it's another thing. But a, a drawing, you select something. This territory is also full of projects that have never been done. You see the river. And in the 19th century, end of the 19th century, after a big flood, they discussed to make a canal. The intention was always to short circuit the meander. And to, you know, this is a way very efficient to avoid the flood here. But you, you just uh, send the problems to other downstream. That's a, and now we change. We say well, we have to share the flood. So we, a river which is we can invade this in, in a few hours, except a extraordinary flood. In a few hours, nothing arrives. So you see this. Now, it's also, I show this also for the students, if there is there are students. So yeah. uh, it's an historical map. Uh, I found that in the archives in Geneva. I think I was the first one to open this box again from uh, more than 100 years ago. The magic is that they made the engineer geometry. They make uh, okay. sure. <laughs> It's like we have a Swiss clown, Grog, very, very well known. He, so he, he had the same problem with the piano. The seat was too long, so it moved the piano. <laughs> yeah, but it was a joke, so it doesn't. So this uh, ma magnificent project, which is, uh, design, which is uh, uh, three meters long, aquarelle, with a, a, s a relevé, a longitudinal section, with 135 transversal section, and they made it two years with a one year and then one year. And you see that the river move, move. The river move. <laughs> Maybe from 40, 40 meters from one year to the other. This is very important, you will see, how to draw a river, how to design, how to build a river. And in the, let's say, 30s, they realize first this uh, a huge, come on, apple ça, drainage, 400 kilometers of drainage, and the canal, short circuit. So another drawing. It's a, it's not a, an observation. It's a, it's a, let's say a conceptual drawing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it because it was not so flat really. But you know, drawing is to exaggerate, just to make the things visible, to make visible the visible that you don't see. So a huge work, prog uh, work. The canal in itself is a beauty. <coughs> the machine could have done by uh, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, or it was maybe done all this by uh, Robert Maillard, someone knows that is a big Swiss engineer of the 30s. But it's a disaster in terms of uh, biology because it's waterproof, so there is no exchange of water between underground, the soil, and so, so it's, it's, uh, it's a motorway to get rid of the flood. And as well, you know, I can't impeach myself to draw. This is a canal. Now, this is a watershed we have uh, in Geneva. It's funny because we have a, a certain territory in Geneva, and all the mountains, that's in, for me the landscape, is always French. So we don't have to maintain it, it's perfect, the French. <laughs> but you see it from everywhere. Now, this river is a torrent, torrential uh, regime. So it seems very calm, not so. Uh, we lack uh, uh, water, but that sometimes 
became very dangerous. And uh, the, in the early 2000, 2001, I think, the, the state of Geneva made a, com a competition to, because of this problem of flood. There was a, a big flood and uh, nearly certain person were killed. So they said, now we have to give more space for the river. They made a competition. This is a plan, not so bad, not so good. And this is a drawing showing our position. There is a canal, and we will give more space to the river, but we are not going to destroy the canal. The implicit program of the competition was get rid of this bloody uh, canal. By the way, this uh, geologist said there is no straight line in nature. Depends the, the lens. If you look at the internal material, you see a lot of, uh, also in botanic, the wine, you see a lot of, and also one of my favorite, when you have the sun behind the clouds, you have ray of light. So this is nature or this is uh, not nature, but it's straight. And it, so you have a lot of other straight line in nature. That is a cliche for me. So we, said we will keep the canal, transform the canal, and give more free, uh, free space to the river. This is the first model, <coughs> the canal. And uh, yeah, there's a canal, and then you give more space to the river. Now, how to draw this, even if it's uh, not a fantastic drawing comparison with uh, yours? Uh, we, uh, this, uh, we'll come back, but this is the design of the competition. You see our hesitation. Okay, we will uh, build a new, or we'll give more space for the new bed of the river, but how to? We don't know where it will be, here, 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 here. And this was uh, very important for us. And now we said in the canal we will make a garden. Now, why a garden? Because we said now we are going to make an experimental project. It's always nice to use the word experimental when you don't know what to do. So what are these gardens? Experimental garden. Oh, good. <laughs> and, uh, but more seriously, we said now, we try to give more space to the river. It's very important for filtration, for, for a flood. But we want this, to call it a garden, because we want that the people can observe what is going on. So it's an open air laboratory. We try something, and for me, the garden is a place of pleasure, but also of experiment, botanical, and of risk, as you know. If you ate an apple, it could be problematic. So th this idea come from the beginning is we have a, a, a linear garden, a river garden, that means that the, the public, it's not a reserve, a natural reserve, it's a, it's a machine where the transformation are proposed to be discussed, understood, shared or not by the population. I think when we work as a specialist, or we don't, if we pretend to have invented or to have an idea, we must not keep it for us. It, it must be immediately discussed in a, in a saying, uh, we do this. Why? Because uh, the river has a more potential. I will come back on this. Of course, this is a general plan. It's about 10 kilometers long. Uh, a river, it's, not, it's like a tree, it's not only the trunk. So when you go as much as is possible due to the urbanization, you have to build the chevelu or all the, the tributaries. And when you do that as a bath, uh, as uh, shown this morning, a bit late, uh, sooner, you rebuild the landscape. After all, uh, 
the landscape is is built by the by the water chemin. Now, if we come back to this. Uh, difficulties to design a river, what to do. So, you know, when you do that, really, you can't go to the contractor and say, let's do, do something like this. Because they will ask how many, what cost, how many hours, what, uh, what the volume of, uh, of earth to be uh, expedited, <laughs> uh, sent away. So I already showed that. So we did it <laughs> with the expertise of a geologist from Berkeley he said the best thing is to to get rid of uh, the horizon bay uh, humus so about uh, 80 centimeters and you let the river you get uh, the river go and the river designs uh, perfectly the project so you don't have to design the river itself is a designer the co-designer there is one problem it takes time. This uh, process of uh, designing, it's the river designs when there is a flood. You must have a lot of water, a lot of energy, a lot of sediments, and all this makes uh, the erosion process. And uh, the people, especially the fish, specialists said, no, no, you think it's going too long. So usually they draw, you know. There is two ways to draw a river. Or the engineer, they have, uh, due to, uh, according to the slope, the volume of water, they will tell you it it's makes this meander, they build it with the concrete, uh, finito. And the landscape architects they have all in mind uh, an English river with cows and, and bosquet, and they build it with uh, soft technology. But both models, let's say scientific and cultural, First flood, the river destroy everything. So the people from the fish and say, specialists, they said, no, no. So they came back with, uh, they put what all that uh, bloody things, you know, trunks with a cable uh, to to provoke the river. It's true, it's, it's working when you put a, an obstacle in the river, it, it, it provoke erosion. So we were looking for, now the problem was, we don't want to design the meander. It seems completely crazy. But uh, what to do? So by chance, or we found the, this uh, diagram of what they call percolation. Percolation is, a, briefly said, it's a, a water going through a porous material. So we said, and the. Scientific they have a diagram more or less hexagonal. So we said maybe we should look to have a, a design which is open and let the river and help the river. So it's a kind of a launching element. We provoke, we accelerate the erosion, but we don't define the, the shape. We made the first experimental model Swiss. And we thought, well, maybe it could be. And then the problem was how to define the dimension of this losange. So we superimposed uh, the, uh, the historical meander to our uh, di diagram in a way that it was a possibility for a former meander to find his way here. You know, and we made the first uh, things like this. The magic or the miracle that uh, the people, the state of Geneva, the, we are also financed by the federal government, they said, yes, you can go on with your uh, idea. Because everyone was looking for uh, escaping from this uh, idea of is too defined, or we make things uh, artificial, so there is no uh, genuine river design. So we made this, we, so we took away one meter. We designed it uh, like this. So one kilometer long, this uh, experimental sector. We dig it with a machine. 
make this uh, beautiful uh, <laughs> laborage. So this imagine the people in Geneva saying that they make a river. <laughs> and uh, the problem we had uh, now, the sky with, was with us. <laughs> And that, the, we let the water enter, and we were really frightened, saying, we, we, we look stupid if the river choose one channel and ignore all the other. <laughs> but uh, no, the river was. And what happened immediately is the acceleration of the tourbillon. Uh, you know, the, this row. Now, the trick of this is you constantly. If you have, uh, the, like the, the first phase I show you, we have a 60 meters uh, wide water. The water has no more power. If you constrain in a, in a, in a channel, you, you have much more energy. And this energy, usually the, 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 the river designer make one channel, expecting that the river power of the water will destroy this channel, but it's not. So we, sup we had this idea to have an open design and a concentration, a series of concentration. And this accelerated absolutely in a way spectacular. In, in two months, it was another world. And the river, you know, the meander were inside the channel. And if you, of course, when you make an experience, it's better to monitoring. So we had a drone and, and all these things to after. And you see the, the evolution. So explain me how you design this, if it's not a, a co-design or, or, or auto-organization of the river flow. You can't design that. Maybe you can design one. And what is interesting is that you you have a reserve of sediment, so the river displays the sediment and, and, and built riffle and pools. So it's really a, a mechanism. Of course, we follow this experiment with a drone. In that case, it's a fl uh, an airplane with orthogonal photography, orthophoto. But we have also people on the site taking all the levels and looking for what kind of sediments, where they go. So they paint the sediments. So you see the red one, I've been here and so on. So it's really, a, and very soon, this garden, completely spontaneous, emerges from uh, from this and uh, so there are animals children and flowers this is the part for the river now what we did with the canal now this view show you this is a part of the river and this is a transformed canal which become a promenade or a linear garden or a suite of a series of a linear garden. I don't enter into the detail. We keep all the surface water of coming from this side because we can't go to the river. So there is a, a, a necessity to keep the canal transformed. The canal was three meters deep, so we kept one meter just to, to have the footprint of the canal. Now, why we, we insist to keep the canal? It's a, you were saying uh, with the Royal College this morning, so you have to, when you transform something, it's, it's nice to see. Or also yesterday, the, the, the lady from, uh, from uh, New York and uh, Boyer, it's better to, to have a trace of what was before. Now, if you er erase a canal, as it was, 
and so you will have a, a new river, but you will not see what has been done. So we wanted to have the canal was here, the river was here, and we see the, the shift from a state to another state of, of the things. So the river was really the, the canal transform was the possibility to see the, the evolution. And then after that, it's a series of a situation, I would say, very, very classical. You have ponds, you have falling water, pergola, why not? Classical architects, gardens, pergola. It's a, it's a uh, urban furniture, I don't know how you said it, urban or garden furniture. This is a problem with, uh, if you take a table, a normal table inside, you put that outside, it looks stupid a bit. So we have exaggerated the dimension, some trying to have something balancing about the, the, the scale of the landscape. And you know, you can have a very long table. All our tables are minimum six, nine meters long, but you can have a family, three people, or you can have, you will see later, much more people like this. So this kind of uh, open aspect of the project is also part of This project, you know, very often they say, well, George is a kind of minimalist. So sometimes you say, oh, it's boring, you know, to, when you do a project like this, it looks uh, 15, 16 years old. So you have two dangers, or you repeat yourself, or you change always. So that's very, very often you see, ah, no, I have a new idea, I change material, I don't take concrete, but the marble. Or, on the contrary, you, you do always the same. And at one moment, I was, uh, and now the, the rest of the lecture, you will see, I enter really, I would say, no, George is becoming a pittoresque gardener, because I, I use all the tricks, view, for example, this uh, borough landscape. This is the uh, mountains and these are hills we have done. You know the principle, so my garden is going to the Alp. So this is purely pittoresque, but I was uh, happy to surprise my minimalist friends. George is becoming pittoresque, yes. <laughs> I, I accept, because I think a, a landscape is more complex, I will go on with. It's not a process, of not, it's not only a natural process. We have seen with uh, ba Abbas, for example, the memorial, but all, it's a memorial like this, it's not a natural process. It's a, it's a cultural landscape, it's, a, it's something with, a, and your country, mine, is full of stories of the people who have indigenous or new incomers, they have, transform the, the project. So there is no, uh, that's uh, again coming to Descola, there is not a clear cut between nature and culture. For example, he was this uh, Descola anthropologist, he shows that even, me, even the Amazonian forest has been absolutely transformed by man from 10,000 years. So all the floristic of the Amazonian is not a pure, uh, a natural process. It has been an exchange of, of between men who were there and how they apprivoise, how they deal with the, with the floristic. So this was my way to not to make a kind of gesture independent of what means the landscape or how, how, rather how works the landscape for the people of this watershed. Because if you go in this region and you enter in a cafe, you will have all old photographs where you see the women washing their uh, uh, things in the river. Or, you know, the river as a story is, a, it's a form 
and a souvenir. The river means something for a lot of people. It's a, so we wanted to, to, to try to reach this uh, common uh, sharing of, of uh, what was there, as you said, what was there. And, you know, this uh, problem of uh, working with uh, what was before and how to make something new. We have a writer, also Charles Baudelaire, he said, because it's, it's about imagination. I always said I have no imagination uh, in a way of, if you, if you translate imagination with fantasy, fantasy. No, imagination is not fantasy. It's not, it's not a creation. Baudelaire he said it's come from the concrete things. And your uh, imagination is a way you, s you can catch the concrete of the world and transform it. We have a, a, a very good uh, writer in Geneva. He said, imagination is not a creation, acnilo, it's not fantasy. It's just a way to rise the temperature of the existing things. You know, to intensify, intensify what is already there, to change, to provoke. So I, I will come back on this. Now we have a lot of, I don't enter, it's a very complex project in hydraulic. We have to, to control the, the amount of water going to the city center. So we had to make a large dam and these dams uh, have created an inner water garden also. It's a part. So all these uh, thresholds are made just to keep the water. When there is a little amount of water, this uh, contains the water. And we had, <laughs> you have seen little children before, we have built these, uh, let's say, rocks because along a river you find rocks and plants. So we took uh, concrete beams because I wanted, or we wanted, it's a, it's a, it's a team project, of, uh, that the children not only see the, the, the river from uh, far away, but have an attraction. So these are attractors to go to the water, to hear the water, to smell the water, to touch the water. So it's a, it's a magnetic uh, field. Vous voyez, je suis vraiment pittoresque. Now, <coughs> there is one point here, particularly special, where the, we have an old bridge. The river was going here and was going there. And here we have the, the ruin of the bridge, of a bridge. This one. And this, we are here. Now the canal is going like this, but initially, and you have this uh, road coming from this uh, little village called Confignon. The problem, or not the problem, there is a fact that uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, when he was 17, he flew from Geneva and uh, he, he arrived to Confignon, where the, someone gave him a bed, food, and then sent him away. So when you have a, another, what you do as a designer when you know that Jean-Jacques Rousseau was on the site of your project. You put uh, an inscription, Georges Crusoe was here, or, uh, or you ignore it. So, pff, en fou, hein? so what to do? So, same painter. Uh, we had a lot of ruins there, so, so I don't know how to put these ruins to figure it. So first we put that in, a, in the grass, and then we copy that. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you see that every, really um, very heavily picturesque now, no? But it happened also that Rousseau, when he was walking around, he, he met two young ladies with horsing, uh, on horses, but they were afraid to cross the river. So he said, I will help you. And, he, and then these two ladies told Jean-Jacques Rousseau he was 17. And in his book, Les Confessions, he said, no, the girl told me, just viens uh, behind me on the horse. And he said, I was completely wet again, just near from the, this lady. <laughs> and they, they said, no, let's have a coffee, and then we will go and uh, eat cheery. And he, he climbed in the trees, and he, he, he threw cheeries, but one cheeries fall down in the, the breast. Of the, <laughs> and he, so I ex, explain this because now, I said, now, this, what we do with all this material. So I, I went back to the uh, Rousseau writings, La Nouvelle Héloïse, Le Pro, uh, Rêverie du Promeneur Solitaire, and I note every time he was talking about, let's say, garden or nature. And I said, now, I have a client, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and I will make on this site everything he likes. So he said, I like a river. Good, we have a river. I like wind, okay. I like fountain, I like table, I like table under trees. And these are cheery trees. So, so we built a Rousseau, what he likes. So, and uh, now we thought the people like the same that Rousseau. And for me, that was important. It's not, no matter, I tell you the story, the people don't the story, but they like the place. And uh, Rousseau himself was saying that he hates, in his writing, he hates an utilitarian way of seeing nature. He said I, um, he was completely hypochondriac, always uh, ill. And he said, I go to the countryside to see the beauty of flowers. Don't tell me that chamomilla is good for my uh, body, because you remember my uh, illness. So, and he said also, he, he was a bit laughing. He was very good in botanic. He had a correspondence with Lene, but uh, Linné, and uh, he said, for me to, to know the Latin name of the plant is not important. It could be a problem because uh, you could see only what you don't see. Instead of seeing the beauty of a flower, you see the Latin name. So it's the Latin name become a kind of screen for the sensation. Now, we had a discussion on the handicapped people this morning. I will finish with that. Um, this, this is a fontaine, the nearby Rousseau. You know, this was in Israel for another. <laughs> This fountain has been uh, done for the Parc de la Cour du Maroc in, in, in Paris, where we have, as usually uh, now for a park, we have to, to keep the slope for handicapped people and so on. And I was associated with Corajou, and Corajou wanted to put the 19th century fountain of the park. And now you have a problem of coherence of your design when you have all the design with material, geometry, and then you put a kind of a, of course, everything is beautiful, but uh, I, we try to make a, a fontaine, a designing a fontaine. And, you know, we started in the office to make a fontaine like this, like this, like this, like, like in Barcelona, like in Moscow. It, it was not very good, to be honest. It was a completely pure shit to be. And uh, we said, no, it's, we don't have uh, constraints enough. So we, we were, I, I saw in Paris that the 19th century fountain, it was not very easy for uh, people in a wheelchair. So I said, now we are going to make a fountain which is really adapted, 
adaptation. That's my, my way to finish in the theme. <laughs> To adapt the Fontaine to, uh, uh, and all, everyone who has worked for these people, it's always a table. You know, they like to put their knees under a table, be in a kitchen. In a, so we we made this Fontaine associated to a table. We call it Fontable. So we invent the name, and we, of course, <laughs> there is nearly never handicapped people. But you know, a fontaine and a table, it's, I wonder why the, it's all not the rule. Because you, you want to, to, to drink, you have a camera, a book, a baby, a fruit, you need a table. So it, but so Peter Walker, the, the American landscape architect, came to see the project and I told him we were working. I told Peter, you explain the, the, the Fontaine problem. And I told him, well, Peter, there is a, you will not see handicapped guy because there are, there are. And we arrived and it was this so, a miracle. <laughs> and uh, this is a conclusion. You know, in Paris, when we put this Fontaine, we designed this Fontaine, the, the former Minister of the Interior of Paris, a socialist, so-called socialist, said, no, 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 no drinking fountain. You will have homeless coming. And we said, oh, go to hell. And we meet. And now you will say, we have a lot of immigrants in Paris. And they are in our park. And when I have seen that, I was so happy to have, to have designed this. No, it's abs absolutely functional no? for this guy. So, so I would like to say that now the importance for me of this project is really to, to deal with a serious problem about water. Now we are in this uh, river project in Geneva. It's not as disaster as in other parts of the world. But if one of the richest countries in the world do, does not do experiment who is going to pay for this? Not the African or I don't. So I was uh, absolutely convinced that once again to uh, accept it's an open air laboratory where we try to better the things. And there are good results in terms of quality of water, quantity of water, uh, re-emergence of a flower, of a life, because when you have uh, water, you have life. And this is associated to a garden, 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 as you said yesterday, uh, Straub, which is really not a, a park, but a place where you think, you feel, and you think. So, and you, we would like, and now we work on a, how to make more information, what kind of, a, of a meeting with the people how we can explain. Also, this uh, borough landscape, I have also another uh, function. They are Belvedere to see the river. Because as always, when you are in the canal, so you climb up and you see the river. So the, the, the garden works like a lens to see the experiment. And these, uh, these, uh, Figure. It's uh, on purpose. They are shocking, in a way, because uh, you know many philosophers have said, but I can quote the real philosopher Gilles Deleuze talking about Francis Bacon. He said, Francis Bacon, pr the painter, not the philosopher, processes with a shock to renew the attention. Because it's, you know you have to be intrigued by some. Some uh, in the already there, you have to introduce a question. And this question come not with a demonstration. We have no panels or explanation. But just, uh, you know, I like when they say, what are they doing here with this bloody uh, cantilever concrete? up to they arrive on this and they smell. So these are attractors or, uh, 
you know, once again, it's a kind of a devices who are built, positioned carefully to try to give a, a new attention, a new comprehension, and certainly a, through a new emotion. So we work with the emotion, and that's it. Yes, it's on. Thank you. Awesome. Beautiful, etc. All those superfluous comments. Uh, bravo. Uh, when did you become uh, a poet? My father was a bookseller, and uh, I started uh, literature. So he started for philosophy, he started literature. But in literature, and this is something to do with uh, Canada, my favorite uh, um, writers were Jack London, so going far north in Alaska, or Fenimore Cooper. And I always translate. Our, our group call, is called Superposition. But uh, as a child, I was a bit solitary not very social already. And uh, I superposed really the stories, and I had a dog. And when it was snowing in Geneva, I really took my dog, uh, put a uh, slide, and I went to the far north. Just superposing the Fenimore Cooper, I saw a, a dog, it was becoming a bear, and so on. So this idea that the reality is always, there is something superposed to the reality. This was certainly, and we were talking also with Bass. You know, he shows this uh, project in Paris with the Montaigne, a, a kind of a transposition of the verticality of La, la Défense into something which is a, a kind of vertical garden. My uh, childhood was really in, in the mountains, as I, I told you. I was absolutely, I, I saw the, the sea, at, nearly 20, I have no idea of it. So it's not like this, it's like this in my uh, childhood. And this, uh, yeah, that was uh, a lot poet, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, he said he's not a philosopher, I'm not a poet. You know, it's maybe the most dangerous uh, adjective or qualification when you say it's poetic, usually it's, it's, you know, it's a very poetic, at least, it's not for you, huh? but uh, uh, poetry is a problem of precision. You know, the story of uh, Edgar uh, Debussy, I think, uh, the painter Degas was a good, very good painter, but was a bad poet. And he, he said to Debussy, to Debussy no, pas Debussy, to uh, Mallarmé, the poet, oh, uh, Stefan. I wrote poet and uh, poesy, and I have uh, many other ideas to make poetry. And uh, Malami told him, ah, my poor friend, you don't make poetry with ideas, we make, we make poetry with words. And we make architecture, not with a concept, as you said. Even if uh, this is a delicate matter, but we are not going to. Uh, we, we understand what you say, and uh, you were also saying, but uh, if you enter in Gilles Deleuze, and when he said, there are, uh, he would say, Deleuze, that philosophy is very practical and empiric and concrete. You know? So each time you touch the world, be poet, be Baudelaire said, it's not uh, in the clouds, so it's the same. 
it's not conceptual. Uh, and uh, the problem is that it's fantastic when when you see a, a landscape or a site and you see the possibility of a project. And there are many uh, uh, different possibilities. So on the same site, you can make a, se a different, very good project. So it's not a science uh, or, uh, but, and also to, for example, yeah, I was also saying, thinking because we talk about what, about atmosphere. It's a very, uh, when I've read your program, uh, it's also, it's a second term I never used. But it's a term which speaks a lot for me, but I call it presence. Uh, presence is uh, in front of a work of art or in, on a site. You have an intensity, a presence, it exists. And uh, the philosopher Walter Benjamin, he said, this presence is a collision of space and time. The, the thing is very present, actual, factual, but it's also very old, very far, very far away. So, and Alvaro Siza, the, the, the Portuguese architect, he said, a good project, you must achieve a kind of evidence. I don't know if it's a, an English name, evident, it's evident. But you see, evident, you have to imagine the evidence. It's a work. So you, very often you say, oh, I want to be simple. Or usually you finish poor when you start to be simple. I don't want to be simple. You achieve simplicity looking for something else. You try to reach an intensity, and simplicity is the best way to achieve this density. It's not a, it's not a stylistic uh, a program. It's a way of life. Uh, if it's... I don't know if we need, well, I think uh, it's difficult to imagine that uh, a beautiful landscape or beautiful uh, architecture, interior or exterior. By the way, Aldo Van Eyck said, he, he said, I never say I go outside. He said, uh, so he's in, uh, he was also in, in England. I go, I enter into the street when I go out of Miami. He said, I never go out of my, of my home, I enter into the street. That's interesting to imagine that you are always entering things. And I have felt this when I was in the Forbidden City in Pekin, where you have a succession of, uh, of uh, an entrance. You never, you never go out. And my wife, she's a sculptor, she make a book. Uh, you must enter outside and uh, uh, sort here, get out inside. That's this kind of, uh, that was interesting in, in your talk, this uh, tension between uh, what is there, how you erase it, what you keep. I was educated uh, as an architect, not as a landscape architect, but uh, I was born in the landscape, which is a way Thinking that you learn only at university is a, is a big mistake. So I was able to, to see what is a cherry tree and a, a, a nut tree uh, when I was six, so because I was uh, born in the landscape. But you have to, yeah. It was not a question, huh? <laughs> Any question? <laughs> Pardon, micro, please. <laughs> um, so, what was the like the time span of that project that you had showed us? And like, because it seems like, oftentimes as designers, you get let's say you know, a very limited time span in which you have to design, then sort of procure and construct a project, and then you kind of leave it. But it seems with the project that you had shown us, it was. It was a very long span where you kind of kept adding on to it and adding on to it. And was there any sort of like a deadline where you had to complete this by, or did you just have complete freedom in terms of no. time? No, we, it was now, it, it's nearly 20 years now, 19 years. But, but we don't uh, work only on this project. And we don't, uh, it's not a continuity by far, far. So we make, uh, 
we have, because it's a very expensive project, so you get uh, finance for uh, one kilometer experimental project, uh, don't enter into the details. And then uh, you make other project competition and then you come back. But you have always this in, uh, in the head and, uh, and then you will have maybe after three years of a kind of a moment of a abandon, you will enter in a f more active phase for two years, for example, because we have to, re the, the site work were maybe two years, so I was, and I go always on the site, you know, because a building you can measure, etc. but this <laughs> site work for a landscape architect is absolutely, uh, absolutely, you know, why? Because, you know, we work with, uh, for example, with a mason or people, workers, who have uh, been trained to make things uh, straight or, I mean, uh, like, uh, so if you want to have a, uh, a more uh, chaotic or if they will not be able to do that spontaneously so you have to be there and so it, it's, a, it's a very it's an interesting question it's very difficult in terms of concrete because you know uh, when I was I, I, I'm going there really every day for months and the worker said well what is this architects always here because the normality of an architect is not so much on the site. So they thought I was controlling them first. So, and then they told me, you are a strange architect because you approve things. Usually the architect said, you demolish because it's wrong. Or they don't say anything. They never say good for, for, for what they said. And so this uh, relationship with the, with the client, the, the workers, one other thing, because it's in the concrete of making things. You know, we had a, this morning, well, I've stopped, don't worry. Uh, we had pro, uh, schema with arrows, how to talk to the people, take notes, and then you will get Alzheimer if you are, no, it's contrary. And uh, so we have the same in Geneva, we had to talk with the, uh, people, you know, meeting and meeting in Holland, c'est la même chose. You have to explain the project to a huge uh, assembly. Which, no, 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 we don't want this. And, but you realize uh, when you do it that uh, the only one you have not organized uh, a discussion are the workers. So when uh, they draw this line, one guy, he was doing that very well, and he said, Monsieur de Combe, qu'est-ce qu'on fait? I don't understand what we do, because it was so out of their daily or normal uh, way of a building that, but they, the good thing is that they were very happy because, you know, usually they work on motorway and they were in the, the landscape. So it was a kind of holiday for them. The, the shadows, the water, they, they would, uh, so usually they, they, they are in a very um, difficulties much more serious, you know. And we go on, now we are going to make a fourth phase and we will work with a, your concept with an extra, extraordinary uh, uh, engineer, Swiss engineer who made bridges in, in the mountain. So it's a, it will bring to the project something, uh, it's very difficult to work with the structural engineer which has a Apart, few exceptions have a kind of a training which uh, they are not very aware of the history of their discipline. Uh, bon, uh, I would like really to thank you for being here. I like this place in, and I think it's a really a place to think about the nature and the culture because you have such a territory without men, without, apparently, void or not void, but uh, it's like uh, Sahara, or, but, uh, and this posed the question of how we, we deal with this world, what we have to, to do. So, and it's not so different from the Alps, as I told you.